Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are wrapping up our week looking at mines and minecarts and today for a bit of a fun break from some of the more technical stuff I thought we could have a go at something fun and today we are going to be going out finding a suitable site and building a minecart roller coaster and for that we are going to be using possibly the greatest roller coaster building thing that has been added to minecraft in recent years scaffolding scaffolding not only looks like the kind of stuff that you could see roller coasters built out of those kind of old wooden coasters that have all of these big structural wooden supports but they also allow you to stack stuff up from the bottom meaning that you can design a curve of a roller coaster from the ground up and i really like this as a, uh, a building material for roller coasters i think it's going to be absolutely perfect you can of course put rails on top of these things so it's nice and straightforward to just kind of build up from the ground and then head up to the top of scaffolding as you can climb it super easily and drop some rails down on here and use it to build a coaster we're not going to build it out here though because this area is something that i've reserved for villagers they already have a bit of a thrill ride of their own as they come down from the villager breeder instead i want to head out to maybe a nice plains biome or something somewhere a little bit out of the way and then maybe we could return to that area in future in order to build something like a theme park i like the idea of having that as a project further down the line but since this is the end of minecart week i thought it would be kind of perfect to do something in a theme park style with a roller coaster so i'm gonna head out in search of an appropriate area to do that and i'll see you guys there and after a bit of looking around i think this is probably the area i'm going to go with it's got a nice open area here i think i've been here before judging by the fact that this tree here is decaying a little bit and i think it's a nice confluence of biomes we've got kind of a uh, a neat little birch forest over there we've got some mountains in the distance but a lot of nice flat open plains area where we can build a couple of donkeys grazing this feels like a peaceful place to start our roller coaster and we can put in so much here i went i had a, took a quick detour to my string farm by the way so that i could grab a little bit more string to make the scaffolding with we've got some spruce planks that i can turn into a crafting table because we are going to need quite a lot of scaffolding for this and i think we could probably do with planting a few of these bamboo plants here and there maybe go back and uh, farm a few more of these and bring some materials with us because a roller coaster is not just going to be about creating a bunch of ups and downs we have to use everything that minecraft can give us to throw at this thing we want to do a bit of landscaping we want the roller coaster to go underground and we can take advantage of quite how easy it is to break up the track in minecart travel and do some fun stuff with that i'm imagining at one point that the track is going to go into a mine in the ground and then maybe it's going to go through a nether portal and then the minecart is going to drop down and we can build a section of the track underground that's going to look like the nether and i'm really excited about that i think that's going to be a fun time we will need to do a lot of digging so i should probably bring a beacon out over here as well but already this place is brimming with potential and if we like the roller coaster here then in future we could always come back and design a few more theme park rides and kind of make this our theme park area so we're about a thousand blocks out from founders forge so if any kind of further expansion of that city occurs then it's probably not going to reach out this far to begin with there's not going to be too much of a clash between this medieval steampunky fantasy kind of town and then a weird theme park area but already the bamboo is growing which is perfect i think it's probably time to get started building the frame work of our roller coaster and before we continue with the roller coaster project a quick update on the piston bolt which i spent a little bit of time working on a longer stretch of and it's now long enough that i feel like i can accurately show you quite how fast this thing travels using the coordinates over there on the left hand side of the screen so i'm going to hop in here this currently runs maybe i would estimate about a hundred or so blocks it's really not that far quite yet but i'm going to be working on this gradually as i go and i'm kind of happy with how this has gone so i'm going to activate the coordinates there take a look at how fast the numbers move on the left hand side of the screen once i hit the button in three two one launch and there we go <laughs> look at it go oh gosh we're gonna hit the slime attack <laughs> amazing stuff i'm so happy with how this is so far and i was talking about this a little bit as i was working on this on a recent live stream and it's not like this is necessarily the fastest way to travel or the most material efficient by no means is this the most material efficient but there is something so so cool about traveling this way redstone powered and having it be hands-free and just knowing that this is probably as good as it's going to get for diagonal travel because those ice boat roads are great for straight lines but in terms of 
diagonal pathways, you're always going to be potentially either running off the side of the ice blocks or bouncing off the walls a little bit, and that's going to prevent you from traveling super fast. So kind of nice to have something like this in the arsenal of stuff to do. Plus, it's also just something that we've never done before, something a little bit different, and I like that about this series. I'm always doing something a little bit different in every video. So I hope that goes some way to explaining why the piston bolt and not, you know, some other means of transport. But I probably should have built this thing in the nether in the first place. Realistically, like, getting 100 blocks in the overworld is not very far, whereas 100 blocks in the nether is 800 blocks in the overworld, so it might be a little bit cleaner of a way to do things. But I'm committed to this now. We're going to do it. It's going to be a long-term project, but it's going to happen. Anyway, let's head back over to the main focus of this video, the roller coaster. Hey folks, welcome back. So here we are at the site of the roller coaster, which doesn't look like much from the surface, but let me assure you there is a lot more lurking below the ground. You got a brief glimpse of it there. There's a couple of mobs still hanging around from the night time, ready to be attacked, and I'll grab the string because that's useful for making more scaffolding. As you can see, the scaffolding has been a pretty nice looking building material for the purposes of setting up this roller coaster. It certainly looks authentic as far as the structure of one of those old wooden roller coasters goes. And while I really wish you could curve the track a little bit more, it's kind of not super possible. I, d I tried to do a little bit more of curvature in the line of the scaffolding, but of course the track is only ever going to be able to go at a 45 degree angle. So I figured might as well just make the most of what we had and do it that way. So this section over ground is actually kind of towards the end of what I've built so far and it terminates about there. What I have, first of all, is... Oh, I should introduce you to somebody. There is a skeleton here wearing full diamond armor, and he is a little bit fighty still. I was able to get him to be preserved while I went and got a name tag by throwing him an enchanted bow that I had managed to fish out of this pond over here. So we did a little bit of impromptu fishing, which is why I'm mostly eating cooked cod right now, and this guy here has a full set of of diamond armor, which is incredibly rare. It's the kind of thing that only really happens when your local difficulty is quite high, so I'm impressed that we got him here when I'd only spent a small amount of time here. But yeah, we got ourselves a skeleton wearing full diamond armor. Somebody in the chat said we should call him Neil because of Neil Diamond. I named him Neil McSkeleton, and I think I kind of want to keep him around as a greeter for the park. <laughs> I think that'd be kind of cool to have like diamond armored stuff just kind of patrolling around here. Either that or I'm going to kill him, and if we're looting three, I might be able to get a few extra pieces of diamond armor. So that is a choice that you have if you are ever confronted with a mob that's wearing diamond armor. If you want to kill it, you might get a couple of diamond armor pieces to drop if you have looting three. They are going to be damaged, but you can always repair them, of course, add mending to them, that kind of thing. But if you're in the same position I am right now, I don't really have much of a use for diamond armor when all of my stuff is pretty heavily enchanted, has mending and everything. I've not really used any diamonds to craft new gear for a while, so the novelty of having a skeleton with diamond armor is kind of something that's worth having. Let's get on and talk about the uh, the roller coaster here because what I've done is I've tried to work a little bit with the roller coaster as an experience, as like a theme park ride rather than it just being a collection of things above ground, a kind of like highs and lows and curves and that kind of stuff. There is a limit to what you can do with minecart track because it cannot be banked in any way and it can't really curve all that much. If you want to create diagonal sections of track, the best you can do is to zigzag pieces of rail like that. And it won't create a larger curve if you kind of curve it around with multiple things. It will just create straight sections and right angle sections. And it's not all that interesting if there isn't some kind of theme around it. So what I would like to do is terraform sections of this, maybe make it like a ride through all of the different Minecraft biomes or something like that, so that it can have something a little bit more attractive to it than just... A bunch of ups and downs but I will take you through the start of the roller coaster because I feel like we've crafted a really interesting experience here that I would like to share with you so you start off on this little section of powered rail here we'll have like a ramp that you can embark and disembark from the, the roller coaster on we set ourselves in here and we start rolling down into the mine we hit a an unpowered powered rail to kind of slow yourself down so that you can look around to these caves. You enter an abandoned mine shaft. You might be headed for the lava, but oh no, it actually turns right and sends you through a broken section of track down a spiral into what is actually a ravine that I found down here at the bottom of the world. And then it sends you back up out of the ravine. You climb up this section here towards the daylight. It slows down a little bit as you get to the top. And then you enter the section of the roller coaster that we discussed just now. So 
There's a few different sections that you can travel around, a few bits that are faster thanks to the powered rail, and a few other bits which, you know, have a little bit of a slower experience so that you can take in your surroundings slightly. It's still quite fast though, and part of the problem with minecarts, I feel, is that you can't really adjust how fast they travel with such precision. It takes a lot of tweaking and fine-tuning, a bit of trial and error, and a bit of a, an artful touch to really get stuff like you know, braking using unpowered rail and stuff like that. Not that this is the most artful way of doing it, but obviously you're heading down the, uh, the, the slope here and you're probably going to be traveling pretty fast through this cave section if you don't slow down. So right now this is all lit up. What I would really like to do is establish a way that we can have mobs hanging out in here, either like mobs which are uh, name tagged so they don't despawn, or at least mobs which will generate naturally in here but won't be able to get out through this section of the cave. And I've already made a couple of attempts at blocking them from getting out here, first with slabs that limit this to uh, one and a half blocks high that we can crawl through uh, as a player or, or, or crouch through at least. And we've got some rails at the back here because mobs don't like to cross over rails all that much. Same on this side, really. I haven't applied quite so many of the uh, the little tweaks here, but we've got a one and a half block high wall in most places, which is preventing anything from walking out of here. But right now, each of these caves is lit up. It would be kind of cool to add some theme park touches to it, maybe have some uh, additional ore blocks and stuff in the walls, maybe little patches of gold, perhaps even a kind of little treasure cove where there are a couple of chests and a bandit has been smuggling supplies in or something like that. Something that's going to make it feel a little bit more like a theme park ride like, you know, Big Thunder Mountain or something like that. Anyway, as you go down into the mineshaft here, it does once again feel a little bit fast, so I might add another powered rail in here to slow it down slightly. But the idea is that you come down, you feel like, oh, you're in an abandoned mineshaft, and this track is leading you straight towards the lava. Maybe with a couple of more artfully placed blocks here, we could conceal the fact that the track turns to the right. Or maybe we can even use that trick I showed you at the start of the week where we have a, uh, a kind of four-way intersection here and all of the tracks are straight so that we take the east or south route. Unfortunately, this heads west and south is towards the lava, so we probably wouldn't have a great deal of luck there. But anyway, as we head over here, you'll find that there is a broken section of the track. And I've done a little bit of rudimentary kind of terraforming of this. This would all probably be dressed up a little bit better, but I like the idea that this section of the track has been broken and caved in, and instead of going straight over the top, you end up falling down onto this section of powered track below. This presented a bit of a problem for me, because having this powered section of track here, before I put this block in, you would drop down onto this rail, and you wouldn't go anywhere, you'd have to manually start it up again by holding forward in order to travel in any direction. I got around that because I realized that you were actually going down onto the first block here instead of that block there, and I put a block in this place. And what that does is it takes advantage of some minecart behavior where if it's on a powered rail and it's resting fully against a block like this, the minecart actually takes off on its own. And this behavior gets used quite a lot in uh, hopper minecart circuits and stuff like that. Basically, as soon as a minecart returns to a block next to a powered rail, it will rebound off that block and continue back around the circuit. And that's how you get hopper minecarts infinitely moving themselves around uh, collection mechanisms and stuff like that. Across here, it goes over what I was going to dig out as a kind of custom ravine. All of this was dug out thanks to the haste beacon we have active in this area, and I thought I would just leave it at that. But then I realized that there was actually a ravine further down. I dug down into that ravine, so I thought, why don't we add a minecart spiral kind of thing going down here? And you come across the side of the ravine here so that you can get a full look at the ravine. Originally, I was just going to have the minecart travel across the ravine like it does up there, but then I realized you weren't really going to get to see all that much of the ravine for the brief few blocks it was exposed to you if you went straight horizontally across the ravine. So I thought, why not have it travel along the ravine wall here, attached to some scaffolding, which is actually suspended up there, and I have a little scaffolding tower in there as well. And then once you're done in this section, we needed to head back to the surface because so little of the roller coaster had been above ground at that point, it really didn't feel like it was going to show up much on the surface. But then we climb slowly out of here. It starts off 
quite quickly but then eventually you actually need each of these powered rails to be four blocks apart in order to get the uh the full boost you need to get out of here and then once you're out onto the surface it just takes you through a couple of ups and downs which like i said could have a little bit of terraforming around them we could have some hills and some foresty sections or we can have some mesa biome terracotta formations or something like that maybe something in the middle here or a lake or an ornamental fountain or something that the roller coaster track can wrap around before we head out into this section and I think from here I'm actually going to go back underneath the surface because I want to do a section where it feels like the minecart is going through the nether. And while of course minecarts and stuff in minecarts cannot transition between dimensions, the idea is that we're going to head down into the earth via a nether portal that we're going to set up here, but the portal itself is not going to transport us anywhere. Instead, I've brought a few shulker boxes worth of nether rack from my storage that I had from digging out the nether hub, and we're going to transform a section of the earth down here into a, uh, a, a kind of facsimile of the nether. It's going to look like the nether. We might even, if we want to, bring in a couple of mobs that are native to the nether, perhaps a couple of zombie pigmen, perhaps a ghast or two even, if we wanted to go the full distance with it. And obviously we would keep them all behind you know, glass walls or something like that so that they wouldn't actually be able to attack the player. But there are definitely ways we could do this artfully and make it look really, really good. I'm also going to have to work on lighting a little bit down here because I don't want to just have torches spammed all over the walls. I want the mine section over there to have lanterns and stuff like that. I want some of this. The nether is obviously going to have lava and glowstone and stuff. Some of the lighting solutions will suggest themselves. Others might be a little bit trickier. So I will do my best to come up with something a little bit inventive for each of those. So let's try putting the portal around here. I want it to be quite large and imposing and kind of give the player the sense that you cannot escape going down into the nether so I guess we'll make it I guess sort of like a five by seven sort of deal yeah we want the player to be going directly through the center of it like that and I think hopefully uh, we should be able to basically slide straight through that and fall down the other side I will have to check that though I'm fairly certain we're not going to go through the portal or anything but I'm fairly certain we should be able to skip through the portal over the top of the obsidian frame and fall down in the block behind that. So let's give that a quick shot. If I just hold W for a bit, there we go. And through the portal and we fall, great. Okay, so we're actually landing a little bit further down from this block here. And because this is a simulated experience of the nether, what we can do there is have a hole basically dug straight down, give or take the ghost blocks here, and uh, we can end up having something that goes all the way down towards the bottom of the world, hopefully avoiding that ravine that we were in a little bit before, and we can dig out a large cavern that's going to be basically the set for a trip through the nether. I've dug this hole right the way down to Y11, and we can kind of fill in the walls with netherrack or, or whatever kind of nether materials we want. Uh, I am out of the range of the beacon, though, <laughs> which I did not expect to be, so I guess we can probably either fly up and get the beacon effect for a second or two, so we can dig out a little bit here and make sure we're not going to intersect with that ravine or we could move the beacon down here for a larger scale digging operation and there we go okay at the bottom here need to hollow out a section just to make sure that we're not going to be interrupting the ravine note that just looks like a standard cave that's okay if we're down here at the bottom of the world and we encounter a couple of lava lakes that'd be really cool that'd mean we could kind of adapt them and make it look like they were part of the nether landscape instead of having to pump in a ton of lava because lava cannot create infinite sources so of course we'd have to bring it all in bucket by bucket if we wanted it to look like there was a solid lake of the stuff and not just a couple of lava sources trickling from the ceiling and forming little kind of pools on the outside. And in these shulker boxes here, I have a whole heap of netherrack, and I also have some magma blocks, some nether brick for maybe a kind of miniature nether fortress, a bit of soul sand, we can grab some gravel, we'll probably find some gravel underground there as well, and we can make ourselves a really neat little nether biome down there, which will look pretty cool once it's done. So I'm gonna head off and do a little bit more of that. I need to throw all of these materials in here somewhere, gosh, running out of space at the moment, but I think we will be able to make a really neat little rendition of the nether down there. And I'll bring you guys back in once that's done. All right, folks, I think this thing is ready for a bit of a test drive. The track is not completely decorated, as you can see, but I do want to make sure that the whole thing is kind of complete. It should all be connected up now, and I'm fairly certain I've planned these things out, so we shouldn't need too much extra acceleration through a few of these bends, but I will just 
to have a quick run through to make sure that everything is working right. First of all, we've got to enable the switch here. I'll try and switch that off as I leave. Nope, missed it. Okay, I'll have to try and get that on the way back. But as before, we come down through the caves. Everything's a little slower, and then we speed up into the mineshaft section, and we hit a lag spike. <laughs> a little bit of a lag spike there, not a big deal. Coming down here into the ravine section, I might include something that tells you which way to look there so you can get the best view of the ravine but either way we come out of the top here yep hit that powered rail just at the right speed and then make it around this section here which should have us going pretty fast now that we've got this powered rail section here down and around the outside and hopefully we should be able to make it through the nether portal this hasn't been super consistent but yep we've made it through and down here we have this brand new nether section which right now oh my gosh it's full of creepers <laughs> good thing we managed to pass those by a little quicker and once we're around this bend we should be able to make our way up in this spiral out of the nether section here and once we reach the surface oh yeah <laughs> there we go once we reach the surface we have a couple of interesting diagonal curves there up this section of powered rail down the other side around one little tight bend there and back into the station where we can stop ourselves using that switch that's pretty cool i like that a lot it's quite a long ride as well it's actually a little bit longer than i thought this was going to be so that's that's really really nice a good length i think for a roller coaster ride here in minecraft so as you could probably tell from the nether section they're having a couple of creepers in it i kind of need to do a little bit more lighting up most of the time i've just got like a hole dug behind the nether rack where there's a couple of air blocks above it and uh, you can't quite see but there is uh, light being let out into the room and the torches actually provide smoke particles which in the in the case of the nether isn't a bad thing it, it kind of lends to the atmosphere a little bit and also as you can see with the nether section this isn't entirely finished in terms of the decor it's still got nether rack to fill in in the walls and i kind of want to do a little bit more decoration to make it look a little bit more cavernous down here like the nether actually is but i would just uh there's just so much nether rack to place i just kind of got tired of it in the end and i would like to get this whole thing finished but but I would like the idea of coming back to this as a kind of theme park project in the future and maybe doing a couple of other rides and attractions and just decorating the area so it looks a little bit nicer. There's some fun things you can take advantage of with scaffolding as well. Didn't really draw attention to this earlier, but since scaffolding can be used to bridge out up to six blocks before it needs another supporting pillar, you can have sections where the tracks will overlap and go underneath themselves. And yeah, this whole, this whole thing really looks quite nice. This section of the track here in particular is something that I owe to Joe Hills a little bit because he pointed out that if you have these curved sections of track going downwards here because a roller coaster is a one-way experience you're not meant to ride it back the opposite direction then you can actually have a curved section where the minecart will treat this as though it's a diagonal slope even though these rails don't exactly connect up because you can't have a slope and a curve on the same block but when you're riding down these in a minecart you it really does feel like you're riding down them at a diagonal you're kind of falling down the uh the kind of curve there and it works really super well so that's pretty cool i've done that a couple more times here and there just to uh to lend a little bit of variety to this because you don't want it all to just be straights and ups and downs you kind of want some diagonal sections here and there as well but overall i'm really happy with how this looks at least the scaffolding section of it above ground looks kind of like a roller coaster should in my brain and i want to do a little bit more work on the decorations around here obviously but i think it's good for a start and hopefully this has given you folks a bit of inspiration about how to build minecart roller coasters in your world of course you don't have to stick with scaffolding you can make it out of whatever materials you want but the possibility to make roller coasters and make them thematic roller coasters as well give them kind of a theme that you can have uh, going through the world and and have different like colors and effects and stuff like that and even biome inspired stuff like the stuff that i've done on this roller coaster i think it can be a really creative process and i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of the minecraft survival guide and this whole week where we've been focusing on minecarts and mines and that kind of stuff don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i will see you guys soon Take care. Bye for now.